So now that we know how much absorption you need to put in the room, where do we actually put this stuff? So the uh, first thing I always tell people is common sense. Where can you actually put this? Where do you have windows? Where do you have doorways? Where do you have unmovable equipment racks? Using the common sense to actually go, okay, where am I actually physically able to install this stuff in my room? Beyond that, a few little tips and tricks to make your life a little bit easier. Number one, corners are your best friend. Putting acoustic treatment and absorption into corners is the most efficient spot you can put acoustic treatment. When you have a corner, you have four reflective points that occur, floor, ceiling, and both of your walls. Sound tends to gravitate between or to those corners and bounce between all those different parallel surfaces. If you walk into any room with a sound system playing, chances are the corner is going to be the loudest, least intelligible spot in the whole room. By putting acoustic treatment into that corner, whether it just be a panel on the wall pushed into the corner, or even better, a panel on a 45 across a corner, you're putting a panel in a very efficient spot in the room where it's going to absorb the most sound uh, possible. So corners really are your best friend. Get some treatment into those corners. You hear the impact that makes right away. Forget everything I said about 10% being the bare minimum you need to put in the room. Just by putting some panels into the four corners in a room, you can make an audible improvement uh, that's quite drastic and very noticeable even in the low frequencies. Number two, parallel walls. Anytime you have wall surfaces that are flat and opposing one another uh, straight across from uh, one another, you end up with sound that can bounce back and forth across the two. Low frequencies are especially evident at this. It's what they call standing waves or room modes, and where that sound wave just ends up with so much energy bouncing back and forth between those two wall surfaces. So getting some absorption on those parallel walls is a very efficient spot, again, to put some panels. When you have a situation where a room has a glass wall on one side, you can't do anything about that glass or very little. You can't put an absorption panel on it. You want to pay close attention to the wall opposite, that parallel wall straight across from it. You want to make sure to get some extra absorption on that because at least sound can only bounce one way. So again, anytime you go into a room, take care of those walls that are directly across from one another. And if something's glass or you can't put panels on one side for whatever reason, make sure you accommodate for that on the opposite wall so sound can only bounce in one direction. So the last trick of the trade is decoupling and, and vibration. Cutting down that uh, and isolating any sort of vibration that's going through the room. The most obvious source would be loudspeakers and subwoofers. By isolating those, decoupling those, getting them off the speaker stand or getting them off of the meter bridge or your desk just causes a lot, of, uh, a lot less low frequency issues from going through the room. Anything that vibrates is causing acoustic issues in the room. You can hear them. You're vibrating your wall, you're vibrating your floor. Particular low frequencies are going to be causing a little bit of an acoustic issue. So anything you can do to decouple uh, and cut those transmission lines between anything causing that is going to be uh, very helpful as far as the overall acoustics of your room. So this can be anything from the obvious, like I say, speakers, subwoofers. It can be noisy HVAC units, refrigeration units anything of that sort. Uh, for some people, it's a matter of floating the floor in the recording studio to that level where you don't want to hear anything from the other room. We've had cases with place here in Vancouver where our subway or SkyTrain system actually ran right through a building and they had to figure out a way to decouple that whole building. Vibrations can cause major acoustic issues, so by eliminating those vibrations early on in the process, you're just going to save yourself time and money later on. So beyond our little tricks of the trade, where is the most efficient spots in your room to put the acoustic panels? You know, the corners are obviously your best friend, but the next most important, most critical place in your room to put acoustic panels is the area where primary reflections occur. Now what is a primary reflection? Primary reflections are the first place a sound reflects uh, in your room after it comes out of a loudspeaker. So the sound will leave the loudspeaker and that very first boundary that it comes across, usually a side wall, is going to be the first spot where sound bounces off and becomes your primary reflection, your first order reflection. The sound usually ends up being so loud and so powerful coming off of that side wall that it competes with the loudspeaker. Your ears, your mind actually think that that sound's coming directly out of the loudspeaker. 
in a recording studio, your mind actually perceives this coming out of the, sp out of the speaker, not from the wall. So you sit there happily mixing away all day long, and all of a sudden you take that CD out to the car, you pop it in and go, that doesn't sound at all like it did in my room. Well, of course not. You no longer have that wall to be listening to. So to get rid of those primary reflections, that's a really good spot to put acoustic panels. So primary reflections, think of your typical you know, music venue. You have sound coming out of your speaker. Sound then comes out of the speaker, hits the wall, and bounces back and it arrives to your seat almost as quickly as that direct sound. Again, your, your mind thinks it's coming out of those loudspeakers, so you sit there mixing away, thinking that it's coming directly out and it doesn't sound the same. In a live music venue, the problem can be even uh, more detrimental for your actual enjoyment of the music. In some seats, there's going to be frequencies combining to amplify. In other seats, there's going to be frequencies combining to cancel one another out. What you end up is a very messy cross-section of waveforms combining to amplify, combining to cancel one another out. The audio is going to sound very different at every seat in that building if you don't take care of those primary reflections. So the easy solution, put panels up in those very first spots where sound's going to be reflecting. Now how do you find that first spot? That's what everybody always asks. Well, I've got a pretty good idea where my primary reflection occurs. How do I actually find the exact spot? Well, here's your little tip. What we do, say this is your loudspeaker, and you're in a listening position right there. I am your friend. I'm going to stand with a mirror and start walking along this wall. This is your side wall. As soon as you, the listener, can see the loudspeaker's reflection in this mirror, that is where a primary reflection occurs. Stick a panel on the wall right there, you've helped solve acoustic problems throughout your room later on. Now primary reflections can also occur from your ceiling, so don't forget about that. Again, the same mirror trick can apply. Tell your buddy to be a little bit more careful now because he's going to be up on a ladder. But again, moving that mirror out from the front of your room, when you can see a loudspeaker in that mirror, that is where a primary reflection occurs. In a live music venue where you have 30 foot tall ceilings, this might not be that big of a concern. But in a home recording studio where you might only have a, an 8 foot or even sometimes less, a 7 foot ceiling, you probably wanted to, uh, to consider those primary reflections that could occur from, from the ceiling. Another acoustic issue that we have, similar to primary reflections, except this would be called flutter echo or room chatter. So this is a reflection that occurs from a surface that's much further away from you than those side walls, generally from the back wall. This is where you're going to have that flutter echo or room chatter. So it's still the first spot the sound's going to project from the speaker. It's got to go all the way to the back of the room now before it reflects off of that back wall. That means there's less power behind it. That means it's happening much more slowly. Your ears and your brain can perceive that, hey, that is an echo or that is a reflection. That's not coming out of the loudspeaker. Best example of this, we've all walked into a live music venue when it's been kind of empty. Drummer on stage hits his snare drum and half a second later you can hear that snare bounce off of that back wall. Your brain very much knows, oh, there's no drummer at the back of the room, but that sound came from back there. You know it's a reflection. So that's flutter echo or room chatter. So by taking care of your primary reflections on the sidewall, primary reflections on your ceiling, and then a little bit of the flutter echo or room chatter problems that can occur from the rear wall of your room, you're well underway to having good acoustics in your room and with minimal effort later on.